So in this video we'll continue our discussion of blood flow and circulations uh, and we will specifically be talking about hormonal or extrinsic control of blood flow. In the last video we talked about a local intrinsic control of blood flow and just a quick review we talked about three examples of local control uh, including autoregulation, active hyperemia, reactive hyperemia and we also talked about the mechanisms which explains the local control of blood flow including the myogenic hypothesis and the metabolic hypothesis. Now let's go ahead and talk about the hormonal extrinsic control of blood flow. Uh, we have two components of this uh, and we will be talking about the sympathetic innervation of the vascular smooth muscle then we will move on to other vasoactive hormones which are responsible for control of blood flow extrinsically. So let's talk about the first point here of extrinsic uh, control of blood flow which is the sympathetic innervation of vascular smooth muscle. In the sympathetic innervation of vascular smooth muscle, we have that it increases the sympathetic tone, which causes vasoconstriction, as you can see here. So increase in sympathetic tone equals vasoconstriction. Uh, decreases in sympathetic tone causes vasodilation, as you can see here. Decreased sympathetic tone equals vasodilate. Okay. So the density of the sympathetic innervation varies widely among tissues. So among tissues we have different densities of the sympathetic innervations. Notably here the skin has the greatest innervations and the least innervations is seen in the coronary, pulmonary and cerebral vessels. Okay, so that covers the sympathetic innervation of the vascular smooth muscle. We'll move on to the next topic which is other vasoactive hormones which kind of lumps up uh, four, uh, four of the uh, other ones that are pretty important in this extrinsic pathway. So what are the four important vasoactive hormones? We have histamine, bradykinin, serotonin, and prostaglandins. Let's talk about each one in detail. So for the histamine, this causes arterial dilation and venous constriction. And the combined effect of arterial dilation and venous constriction sh will, will increase the PC, okay, which is the capillary hydrostatic pressure and increased filtration and, uh, out of the capillary so increased if, as you remember from our previous discussion in previous video talking about increased hydrostatic pressure in the capillary that causes increased filtration leading to edema okay so that covers histamine histamine causes arterial dilation arterial dilation equal increased hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure increased filtration equals edema now the second uh, component or other vasoactive hormone that we want to talk about is the bradykinin. Bradykinin causes arterial dilation and venous constriction. Okay, this produces increased filtration out of the capillaries, which is similar to histamine we just talked about, and also causes local edema. Now let's talk about the third vasoactive hormone, which is serotonin. Okay, it's also uh, sometimes uh, known as 5-hydroxy tryptamine. Okay. This causes arterial constriction and is released in response to blood vessel damage to help prevent blood loss. Okay? So if there is blood loss, we need the serotonin. It just jumps up and it causes constrictions of the arterioles, of the arterioles and, uh, and that helps uh, uh, our, our body react to this uh, uh, blood, uh, blood loss. Okay? The serotonin has been implicated in the vascular spasm of migraine headaches. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting to know and that's why a, a lot of uh, patients that have migraine headaches are on a medicine such as amitriptyline uh, which works uh, via the serotonin pathway. Uh, the last point I want to talk about here and we'll end with this is the prostaglandins. The prostaglandins we have the prostacycline we have a series here which are called the E-series of prostaglandins and then we have F-series prostaglandines and then the thromboxin A2. The prostacyclines is a vasodilator in several vascular beds, okay? So this dilates uh, a lot of vas vascular beds and it's produced uh, to do that job. We have the E-series prostaglandines. These are also vasodilators. The F-series are vasoconstrictors. The F-series prostaglandines are vasoconstrictors and uh, you can try to find a way to remember that. Uh, with the with the first letter. Uh, now the thromboxin uh, A2 is a vasoconstrictor. So let's uh, review prostacycline and E-series. Cycline and E-series 
these are vasodilators. So prostacycline E series vasodilators. Now the F series and the thromboxin A2 are vasoconstrictors. Okay, they, so hopefully the, the sound effect that I just made will help you remember this. Uh, Alright, this ends our uh, discussion of hormonal extrinsic control of blood flow. Next, we will be talking about coronary circulation and cerebral circulation. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you.